Over 7 million illegal cars are being driven on Britain's roads every day. The van's got no tax, no insurance. We're taking it. Each year, hundreds of thousands of vehicles are seized. We need to seize that car. We need to get that car off the road. It's a bit of a cat and mouse game, so hopefully the cat will win today. And locked up at one of the country's car pounds. We are not allowed to let this vehicle leave. This time, we're on the road with the police. So the information is drivers try to run over his ex-partner. Yeah, we're going to block the vehicle in now. The parking enforcers. You haven't paid outstanding parking tickets. And if you didn't, sir, I would really appreciate that. And inside some of Britain's busiest car pounds. Do not cancel the insurance if you don't hear from a customer. To uncover the shocking. The allegation is you've tried to run over your ex-partner. Miserable. It just takes you all back here to just make me memorise of it. I wake up at night as well, seeing the accident. And downright dangerous drivers committing all kinds of vehicle violations. It's not just difficult, it's awful. These Let me out going then. are the highway heroes cleaning off our streets. Yeah, and they won't release my truck. And once you've lost your vehicle, if you don't pay the fine, you can wave goodbye. Cars off the road, the person's in custody. To your wheels. Yeah, police. Police. So good. After 14 days, they tell us we can scrap it. Across the UK, the artery of motorways and roads is patrolled by a dedicated joint force of police. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later align in court. Government agencies, council enforcers, and of course, recovery agencies. Yep, a lot of people stop today for different offences, so it's game on. To make sure every law-abiding road user is safe. But sometimes it's not the illegal cars on the road that need to be tackled, but those parked exactly where they shouldn't be. Nobody generates more cars for many car pounds than the police. And in Abbey Wood, South London, officers from Greenwich Council and the Met Police are prepping for one of their biggest ever joint operations. The truck could come down there and there, couldn't it? Yeah. And then that's the garage area right there. Yeah, that's fine. And we meet here. It's illegal to sell or repair more than one vehicle in a public place without an appropriate council trading licence. And this multi-agency op plans to seize back council land suspected of being used for just that. It's run by Sati Hare, Greenwich Council's environmental crime investigations manager. Morning all. We're really gathered today to do a joint operation between the Met Police, Safer Spaces, and street services and via crime. So the main aim is, is that there's been an allegation of some land that is being used by a single occupant of a person that lives local uh, for repairing cars, possibly MOTs, any sort of vehicle related maintenance to cars. I believe that there hasn't been any permission given by the local authority. And we're really just here to find out exactly what's going on and possibly remove vehicles that shouldn't be on that land. This huge team of 30 agents and two car recovery companies have been brought in to tackle a potential breach of the law. Around the corner from this communal area are 34 garages. Sati and his team suspect that a number of them have been taken over and damaged. Looking at it's going to notice, so I think we should just literally go. Let's go. Um, so if you can open it, we'll go. But there's only one way to find out if their suspicions are correct. Council officers have to force entry by breaking an unauthorised lock. This one is an immediate removal. It's in a dangerous condition. It needs to go. So let's get this one inspected first. The situation is worse than they feared. Numerous cars are taking up space intended for local residents and creating a dangerous environment. Right, this one can go as well. Yeah, it's unsecured, this one can go. It's sawn, it shouldn't be actually on this land at all. Quite a lot of fly tip in here and you've got quite a lot of car parts in bags. You've got exhaust. It's quite clear that a lot of these vehicles are being worked on or dismantled. Uh, and, and this is something that we do not allow on housing land at all. As the council officers work to clear the site, 
the police believe they have what they need to arrest the suspect. Any sign of life upstairs? No, I'm looking upstairs. He has got a camera up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, he has a camera at the back as well. His upstairs window's open. He must be there. He must just be asleep. With no answer at the house, police have to play the waiting game. Back at the garages, though, things are a lot busier, with several vehicles already on their way to the car pound. Silver car's going, blue van's going as yeah, well. Yeah, they're done already. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> and council officers are flat out gathering evidence, keen to find out just how many of the garages have been commandeered. If you look at some of these tools, you've got compressors there. These are very expensive tools. And then you've, you've got, you can see here, you've got snap-on tools here as well, which again are very, very expensive. You've got literally everything you would see in a legitimate business. But this is not a legitimate business. I've been doing these operations for a long time now and you almost get a sixth sense that you know what's going on and we really do go out instincts and we know when something's not right and if something is happening on site that is unlawful. This particular vehicle it should be taxed, should be parked appropriately. Uh, it clearly isn't, it's not secure. Uh, the, what we're seeing here is looking at the condition of the vehicle itself it looks like this vehicle hasn't moved for quite a substantial amount of uh, time. Uh, you can tell by the rusty brake discs. It's not secure, so children can access it. Uh, it's dangerous. Uh, it's got some car parts in there. Uh, so generally, it's given us an indication that it's an abandoned vehicle. It's a vehicle that's possibly being worked on, and it shouldn't be on housing land at all. At a nearby house, police officers are still waiting for the suspect to respond so they can carry out their questioning. Is there any sign of him out of the back? Uh, there is an entrance out of the back, there's no sign of him. Yeah, because there's no one at his front door, so just keep an eye on the back of the house just in case he, he pops up there. Yeah, I've got a good eye through the um, garage and smash through. No, he's having a good look at us, um, but he's not coming out. OK, that's received. Apparently he's looking out of the back of the house, but he's... Right, he's just closed the window and his, his blind's drawn. Um, so I don't know if he's going to come out to play. OK, we'll have another knock on his door. They've seen him look out the door and, uh, and then close the window, so it's, 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 he's definitely in there, which means that we could go in because he's clearly in the address. The police's patience is running out and they're now planning to force entry to the property. The idea is we're going to try and force in. We're not supposed to try and make our own way now. If not, we're getting full stone, okay? Yeah. So they're getting an enforcer down now, which is like the big red key. It looks like they're going to go in the back door. Vehicle insurance is designed to protect you and others from financial costs should you be involved in an accident. But it isn't optional, so the police are always on the lookout for any of those one million motorists who decide it's not for them. Over in Northampton, CMG car pound driver Ashley is on a call out. So we're off to a police shop. Uh, it's, uh... No traffic, no insurance. So when we get the job come through, we will just get being taken for no insurance. I had one once and I couldn't find it. And I was like, well, it set me down this road somewhere and it was on its roof in a ditch. Luckily for Ashley, when he arrives, this van is parked by the side of the road with the police awaiting his arrival. Morning, mate. All right. So the van's got no tax, no insurance. So we're taking it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. It annoys me in a sense because if that was me driving around and someone crashed into me with no insurance, you know, my premium goes up. If your car's got no insurance, don't drive it on the road. 60% of our police work, I'd say, is people knowingly going out on the road when they shouldn't be. We get some tremendous excuses of why no one, they've got no insurance. Like, I didn't make the law, you know, and the police officer that's taken the car off you didn't make the law, you know? It's just something that they've got to stick to. 
For PC Matthews, it's an all too common occurrence. Uh, well, obviously, uninsured vehicles um, put a huge burden on the on the rest of um, you know the, the law-abiding public. Um, everyone's got a responsibility to insure their vehicles and ensure that they're um, licensed um, correctly. Uh, and unfortunately, this vehicle wasn't. With the van secured, Ashley heads back to the depot. And the police obviously put their stickers on there to say that it's been seized for no tax and no insurance. So, like, it's never a good look for a, a small business like that where, like, someone will see it and go, oh, if they can't pay their insurance on their van, are they going to pay their liability insurance when they repair your house or do they pay their tax bill? So it never looks good. Back at CMG, the owner has 14 days to retrieve his vehicle. And unfortunately for yard manager Terry, it's not long before he does. Because coming up, this driver goes from zero to boiling point in seconds. What's it on? No. If, if you're going to speak to me in that What's tone of voice, I'm not going to do anything yeah. for you, am I? What's it on? It's criminal damage. In Northampton, the owner of the untaxed and uninsured van... Hello. Hello. How are you? Well, has come to collect his vehicle, which has now outstayed its welcome, thanks to an extended stay of execution by the police. It's been here for the past day. Well, a, a protracted stay at the pound comes at a cost. You have got £910 to pay today. And the owner thinks he should get a bit more for his money. Do you think it's valid for that? Huh? Do you think it's valid for that? Valid. Valid polish. <laughs> Fully paid up, the owner's able to collect his van from yard manager Terry. And that's when the joking stops. Yeah, but no one's been in it since you de de kitted it. Yeah, I know. What's this? What's that with that spray, mate? That'll come off with a little cloth, OK? You got a cloth? I haven't, no. You do get stroppy people, you do get angry people, but I'm not being funny. I'm not the kind of person who shies away from anything like that. But we can all be stressy. The driver is indeed a tad stressy. He's concerned about some paint marks on his vehicle, which, as CMG sees it, were already there when they picked up the van. Yeah, but no one gives you the right to this oh, fella. No one gives you the right to spray my van. No one gives you the right to spray my van. This is my property. Okay. Listen, I'm when this van came in 33 days ago, yeah, yeah my property. it had 14 days for you no, to no, come no, speak to the police. Contact the police. I've been, no, no, no. It's something else. It's nothing to do with that. It's something else. They've only got, they've given me till Friday today Listen, to pick it up. This car, this okay. van, says here, came in for no insurance yeah. and no tax. Yeah? yeah. Right, after 14 days, they tell us we can scrap it. Speak to the police, man. Well, you, you need to speak to the police, That's really, don't you? Because it's, it's, it's not our fault your van's in here, is it? If your van had insurance and tax on it, it wouldn't have been in here. Tempers soon fray. My vehicle. What have we damaged? What? What have we damaged? Paint. Spray paint. That will wash off. Wash it off, then. Wash it off. What? I've got paint off? off the window. Wash it off. No. If, if you're going to speak to me in that wash tone of voice, I'm not going to do anything yeah. for you, am Mate, I? Wash it off. It's criminal damage. No, I'm I'm what, what, so we're responsible for all the bird on no, the front as well, are we? That's criminal damage. You sprayed it. You sprayed it. Terry is not backing down, but neither is the van owner. They sprayed it, didn't they? They've caused criminal damage to my vehicle that belongs to me. They had no right. I had to end the business play on Friday to pick this up. End of play Friday. Friday. I've got emails and everything. I'm going to report it to the police. It's criminal damage. It would appear the van owner has a history of upsetting people. In fact, he was reported for no insurance by someone he knew. Long story short, I got stopped by the police. The missus reported me for summer. Thanks, missus, reported me for summer. I got stopped by the police. I didn't realise it's short. Yeah, that's why. With the van owner and CMG reaching something of an impasse, everyone takes photographs as evidence. Well, he's going to make a complaint to the police because we've got paint on his van, but. I think that paint's been there a little bit longer than anything we've done, so... And the van owner leaves, but not before he states his case one last time. I've your car, that's criminal damage. Am I not? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I've your car, that's criminal damage. Belongs to you, it's criminal damage. I have to end the play to this day, but... In the end, the driver never carried out his threat, and no complaint was made against CMG. 
Unfortunately, CMG photographs every vehicle before recovering it, and this roadside pick proves indisputably that the paint was already there. In Abbey Wood, South London, a multi-agency operation is taking place to clear council land that they suspect is being used for repairing vehicles without a council license. Numerous vehicles have already been removed. Quite a lot of fly tip in here. You've got quite a lot of car parts in bags. You've got to remember that this type of activity will encourage other crime. We clearly saw a lot of vehicles dismantled. We, we saw lots of fly tip. These are all items that will attract other types of nuisance. So when we clear the land, it's exceptionally satisfying. The suspect lives locally, and the police are keen to question him on suspicion of criminal damage to the garages. So they're getting the forces down now, which is like the big red key. It looks like they're going to go in the back door. Just minutes before the officers force entry, the suspect decides to come out. Do you understand what's going on? OK, so there's a council operation because there's been reports of uninsured vehicles and criminal damage out here. Criminal damage of what? what? Garages. The garage. Right, right, yeah. The garages are in your pardon, the garages opposite. The garages have been like for years. So the garages opposite, it's been alleged that you smashed through the wall inside some of the garages. That's caused over £1,000 worth of damage. Oh, I've That's been all right for years. Well, so this is what we've been told. It's their property, and what they said to us essentially is that it's been damaged by someone who's trespassing us in there. So you're paying, you've done running out in the garage. I rent so, that garage, yeah. You do rent that garage? Yes. The suspect is claiming that he only rents one garage, so the officers at the site need to gather evidence that place him at more than one. Just something somebody has said to me. It might be worth checking some of these garages. Should we do that? So what we want to have a look is just what's inside these garages. The garages we can't open are the ones that are legitimately rented out. There you go. More car parts. Look at that. Don't know whether the police want to do a check on that. On the motorcycle, in case it's involved in any criminal activity. Bloody hell. This is commercial enterprise here, which is totally illegal. We do not allow that on our land. I mean, to me, it just appears that he's using every single one of these garages, or more or less, are being used yeah. to store car parts. They suspect the man has been using 18 garages in total, as well as the land around, for unlicensed business. There you go. So th this particular package, which did consist of... Vauxhall Corsa car park, and it was addressed to the gentleman. I believe that's absolutely fantastic evidence that the gentleman is engaging in this legal activity of repairing vehicles for, uh, for his own financial gain. The extent of the damage is significant, and the police activity is beginning to draw attention from the locals who start arriving to retrieve their vehicles. He can't, he can't put it there, he's blocking the way. He's not gonna... Yeah, I've got the key. Yeah, we don't know who's got the key, sir. Can you put it back? No, he... Listen to me. He's going to drop the car for you. He's not going to take it anyway. He's just taking it out of the way, yeah? OK, so what I would suggest is yeah. the silver vehicle itself yeah. you can remove. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. The actual totally flatbed truck, no, that's going. That's, we're, not, we're not leaving that here. No, it's, it's going. We've already put a notes on it. It's already earmarked to be removed. That is in such a dangerous condition, Mate, and this my, is look, our look, land. I'll be honest with you, yeah. Ain't my fault that he says to me. OK, so have you given this truck to somebody? Yes, I've given okay. it to... OK, can I ask who you've given it to? I've given it to a mechanic. Look, there's the engine there sitting there, mate. Look, OK, look, and, look, and this mechanic lives where? Well, he said he lives around the neighborhood, you know what I mean? That's all, all I'll say to him. OK. Can you repair my stuff? Yep. Lovely. My, the, outside the front, that's yep. my car there, yeah? That's yep. coming to take it, yeah? Yep. That silver car's mine there. Yep. That's my recovery truck. Okay. The engine's sitting there to go in there. What has he quoted you or what are you paying him? Oh, mate, I'm paying a lot of money. Yeah, roughly how much? £1,500 to get it repaired. To get that repaired? Yeah. OK. That's, um, a, that's a tool for me, you know what I mean? Right, no, totally understand. So, look, it, it, we're not leaving it here. It's going now. Um, what I will say, 
you you can claim it from them. Have I got to pay for it though? Of course, you're going to have to pay for it. I mean, th this operation has cost the local authority a huge oh, amount of money. Uh, I believe that guy who's running a damn business oh, yeah, course, from yeah. here. Based on what they've discovered so far, the police are satisfied they have what they need to arrest the suspect. Unfortunately, because of the offences that have been disclosed to us, if you leave your phone for now, leave your phone for now, place you under arrest for burglary and criminal damage. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. We do not mention when questioned, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Control 1616. Uh, go ahead. Can we get space for one male adult? Northampton. For some, a collision means losing a vehicle. For others, it means losing a lot more, a way of life, or even a living, like Claire. I had a head of collision two weeks ago. Well, I was just on my way to work. I swerved into the curb and panicked. So I didn't go into a ditch. I pulled the steering wheel the other way and straight into a Range Rover. It was, it was awful. Absolutely awful. Then I just remember waking up and gasping for air and then getting rushed to Coventry Hospital. They thought I broke my pelvis and my hips um, and they weren't fully equipped for that. So I was there for a day and then went down to, got discharged from Coventry at midnight on the Monday and went down to Luton and Dunstable and then they done an operation. Having suffered such serious injuries, this is the first time Claire has been able, or willing, to visit the vehicle she was driving when her life changed so dramatically. But from the looks of things, she's fortunate to be here at all. That's scary, isn't it? It just takes you all back, it's just making me memorise it a bit, like... I don't want to see that. That thought's bad. That's awful. Oh, yeah. Lucky to be alive. Grateful. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Despite all the safety features on modern cars, sadly, it's a familiar scenario for Ian. Goes to show you can never be too safe behind the wheel. Since I've worked for CMG, obviously through the uh, stuff that I have seen, I obviously drive a little bit safer, a little bit slower than I used to do on my days. The van, unlike Claire, can't be patched up and put back on the road, so she collects her belongings while her mum photographs the damage. Mum, can you take pictures of all of that? The van might be a write-off, but as Claire uses it for work, she's hoping to salvage as much as she can from inside. I run a cleaning business, so I've just got all my work stuff from some paperwork in the front. Yeah, this is my office, yeah. Like, I do everything from the van. So it's like, yeah, it's very emotional. It's horrible. I'm going to take that and put it in the garage until I'm recovered and I can go back to work and use the stuff. <laughs> the doctors have told me up to eight months recovery, but the second doctor I've seen when they checked my scars, my ankle, they said up to three to four months, so it's better than having no leg. Claire heads off to continue her recovery, but it's a different story for the van, which has nowhere to go but the scrap it. <laughs> Traffic violations keep Britain's car pounds busy round the clock, and something seen time and time again on our streets are cars parking in the wrong place. So the car pounds often find themselves working hand in hand with one of the most vilified public figures in the UK, the civil enforcement officer. 
Agent Sheffield on patrol today are Angie and Savta. On this route, because it's got a lot of shops on it that sell food and stuff, people just stop to pick food up. Um, they don't realise all the time that this, it's a clear way. We could issue 15 or 16 tickets on this route um, altogether. Once the ticket has been issued, that isn't the end of the story. If the owner doesn't move the vehicle, it will be moved for them and taken to the car pound. I've just said to that gent there, I said, he, he just said to me, he says, well, I may as well leave it here now. I said, you can leave it here now, I says, but in future, I said, we're all going to be able to tow them away. So he just, he just laughed at me and went in shop. So I don't think he thinks we're going to do it, but we will. They do a good job, guys. I know people hate on them, but it is what it is, isn't it? We need to learn from my list, right? <laughs> An unusually understanding customer. Do I feel famous? No. Although his companion is a little less jolly. I know. He's been ever so nice about it, though. But the traffic wardens aren't just being pedantic. They're trying to keep the road safe and clear. See, the bus is struggling to get through now. The passenger in this car makes his protest known. This is what I think of parking tickets. Which means that the driver is left with nothing more than the bitter taste of the fine. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, guys. Drive. <laughs> Coming up, tempers fray in the fight against car crime. No, no. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, if you didn't swear, I would really appreciate that. Earlier in Abbey Wood, South London, a multi-agency council operation saw a man arrested on suspicion of committing various crimes on council land. I place you under arrest for burglary and criminal damage. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned, something which you later on in court. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. The suspect will be taken to the local police station for further questioning. Have a look in, you're happy? <coughs> OK. He refused entry to us, um, so we had to go and arrest him for burglary and criminal damage, yeah, the damage to the, uh, to the garages, so he's going to be coming to custody where he can give us a full account of what happened. At the end of the day, what are we trying to create here? We're trying to create a safer environment, we're trying to create a cleaner environment, and bearing in mind that, you know, even if there's particular areas where there are children, if there's any particular type of nuisance that relates to waste or vehicles, we're there to make sure that we actually get rid of those types of issues. We do know that a white male has been arrested at scene on suspicion of burglary. He's been taken to Bexley Police Station where he will be interviewed under caution by the Metropolitan Police. It's absolutely clear that this land was being used to repair cars. It's land that belongs to the Greenwich Council. The person carrying out these unlawful activities does not have permission from the council. Uh, I believe it's been carrying on for a number of years. For me, I believe that actually we've done a really, really good job because we've cleared the land of these vehicles and hopefully brought some peace to the local residents. We won't tolerate our land being used for unlawful activity and we have an absolute zero tolerance on this type of activity or behaviour. And the message is that if it's happening anywhere else, on housing land, we will take enforcement action uh, and possibly prosecute as well. All the vehicles are being seized by two local car pounds who will hold them for 14 days, and if they aren't collected, they'll be heading for the crusher. You can see that it's, there's lots going on because there's a number of trucks lifting vehicles that are going to actually go back to the depot, possibly crushed. So these vehicles will probably end up being crushed. It's very unlikely somebody will claim these vehicles uh, and should they claim the vehicles, they would have to prove it belongs to them. It's likely in my 15 years of experience that these vehicles are actually registered to anybody. In total, this operation has seized 10 cars, one van, one caravan and four van loads of fly-tipping waste. When you finish the operation and you see all the vehicles stacked up on a transporter, Actually, that is what's so rewarding, because that's what you've taken away from somebody who's conducting unlawful activities. So, uh, yeah, we, it, the feeling is absolutely great. In the end, the man was released by the police without charge. He stated that he had not committed any criminal offences, 
and claimed that the council had deprived him of his livelihood by mislaying an item of equipment and prematurely authorising the destruction of his recovery vehicle. The council are currently considering whether to commence civil proceedings. In North Sheffield, enforcement officers Billy and Saf are hot on the case of those flouting the city's parking laws. How did you not know that I did fire dogs? I, I thought everybody knew that. No, not me. I had no idea. A little bit of body burning, and then, uh, yeah. But that's why, that's why I need to have a fire extinguisher. Because yeah. obviously there's a lot of, it's fun, but you have to be safe. It's good for a hairy one, though, isn't it? Do you know, actually, yeah, it is. I've got some hairs on my arms at the minute, but it will, within, within one sweep, they'll all be gone. It smells a little bit funny, yeah. but... The control room at Council HQ have alerted them to reports that a van with multiple outstanding parking fines has been located. All right, we've got it. it yeah, it's still here. All right, so I'm doing this this time, it's aren't your turn. OK. Oh, yeah, it's one, two, two to control. Yeah, one, two, two, pass your message. Just to make you aware that we have located the vehicle in contravention to be removed, uh, and my colleague 73 is just completing the paperwork now. Over. Yeah, 122, two, loud and clear. Thank you for that. Over. We've found a vehicle that is parked in contravention that has a number of outstanding warrants on it, so is classed as a persistent evader, and we will be looking to remove this vehicle. My colleague's just completing the paperwork now. And then when that's complete, we will attach the authorised for removal sticker, get in touch with the removal vert service and wait for them and come and take it away. Waiting for the recovery truck to come can be a bit frustrating. You want it to be resolved as quick as possible, whether it's the driver coming back or the car being removed. Uh, I prefer the second one to occur more often than the first one, because then you just, the car's gone, you're gone. There's no chance of uh, any altercation. You need a yellow sticker, don't you? My apologies to the recovery service, so that's what I've just said. Please cut me out. Yeah, that's a Roger. <laughs> Removing the van to the car pound gives the council a much better chance of obtaining the money owed for outstanding tickets. Fortunately, the recovery lorry arrives promptly with no sign of the van's owner. We have checked the PCN. It has been issued correctly to a white Vauxhall. Over. That's great. That's all we needed. With the van safely attached to the winch of the recovery truck, this vehicle is destined for the car pound. Sure, but then... Just got. Uh, I'm sorry, I've just got a member of the public with me at the moment. The owner turns up. It's too late to stop the recovery, and he's not at all happy. It's because you haven't paid outstanding parking tickets. Yeah, it's because of the what amount of un unpaid parking what fines that have been attached to your vehicle, sir. While you're on a lift and you're waiting for the recovery truck to arrive to remove the vehicle, it can be, you can have quite a feeling of apprehension. They may return at any point and we don't know the connection that they have with that vehicle. And this gent might have even more of a reason to be less than happy. Did you say you bought it? Right. Right, so when did you buy the vehicle? Just uh, last month. The best thing to do then is to get in touch with Sheffield City Council. The gentleman will be able to give you information as to how to get in touch with them. Well, I need my stuff what's inside it. You'll have to go to the pound for that. With the owner claiming he only bought the van a month ago, he's hoping his problems might disappear instead of his van. Unfortunately for him, it's not that simple. And things can escalate. There's no preempting how a person's going to react. Because there are times when you almost get in the car lifted and then the owner of the vehicle comes back. And in certain situations, they're well within their rights to just drive off. Nothing we can do. Yeah, but what I don't understand is my, 
fine when you're seeking it. Yeah, it's because there are warrants out against the vehicle, sir. Yeah, but it's run through the court. Yeah, but it's not. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, if you didn't swear, I would really appreciate that, because I'm not swearing at you, and I'm just trying to be... If that gentleman has just bought it, then unfortunately he's also responsible for the vehicle and whatever may be attached to that vehicle. For now, this driver has to say goodbye to his wheels, and if he doesn't sort out the fines and collect his vehicle, it could be crushed. Coming up... There's an unhappy camper at the pound. Um, bit of... Hey, oh, what can you do? Easy target, the motorist, aren't huh? In Northampton, it's another busy day at the pound for driver Ian. CMG can hold up to 344 seized vehicles at any given time but it's unusual for one of these to turn up. Here we've got a camper van that was, I brought in on Monday night uh, for no tax. It was all locked up and secure. We uh, decided to load the vehicle up, and the gentleman came up to us and he was telling us that he'd, uh, he was unable to tax the vehicle because it had no MOT. That's understandable, so it shouldn't have been on the road. I bring vehicles in for various reasons, for no insurance, used in crime, stolen, RTC vehicles. We do have a lot of no tax and no insurance vehicles coming in. And now, the owner's come to get his camper back. The in motor home, do you happen to have a utility bill or anything with you? But first, there's the red tape. You bought insurance? Yeah. yeah. Is that on your phone or anything like that? I think it's in it. It's in it. Certificate, isn't it? Yeah, it's right. Um, under the untapped, we have to have some like, utility bill. I'm just thinking insurance would probably cover that if we get a copy of that. We, we never asked for a utility bill. And then there's the haggling. You put down for four days of storage. Yeah, that's what the computer's saying, is that not? Well, you, collect, you came back here at 11 o'clock Monday night. Okay. 24 hour. Oh, we'll look into it for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. it'd be three days, not four. So and then we need a long card number and an expiry date, and then we can put it straight onto the card. Okay, all right, cool. Thanks, Thank you. Storage fees paid. The van is returned to the not so happy camper. It's booked in for an MOT on the 28th of March, and we've just brought it back from Cornwall and parked it on the road because we couldn't tax it because you need to have an MOT to tax it. And because it was on the road without any tax on it, they came, got every vehicle up, cover and took it off the road. But you can't tax a vehicle without an MOT, and we can't MOT that because it's a class four until the 28th of March, we can't get it in. So it's just cost us £421. Okay. Well, what a pleasure. Well, surely you, you should be able to have a period of, say, three weeks where you where you wait for an MOT, where you're allowed to keep it on the road. I mean, this is seven metre long. Motor on, won't fit in on the standard person's driveway, and he was literally parked across the road from my house. So, how are you feeling? Um, bit of... Hey, oh, what can you do? Easy target in the motorist, aren't they? It's been a costly mistake for the owner, and if he doesn't manage to get his MOT and tax sorted quickly, he could find himself back here again. Of the 100 pickups a week that CMG carries out, many are given to them by the police, dealing with everything from uninsured drivers to multiple pileups. There's plenty of variety, and another veteran of the pound, Lewis, has been sent to pick up a suspicious vehicle. So you got another job? Uninsured BMW on false plates. I believe it's showing as an 05 when it is in fact an 08. So I don't know whether they've put their plates on it to uh, hope to that plate that they've stolen off is insured so they don't get pulled, but ultimately they have and now we're going to collect it. Some days are difficult, but other days are not. You, you can go out to them, like I say, they are completely boring. Mind you know, you'll just forget about it as soon as you drop it off. Um, and then other times, some of them do stay with you for a little while. Every day is different. 
The police officers are already at the scene, where they've made a strange discovery about the vehicle with the incorrect number plates. So the vehicle that we've just seized um, for no insurance should actually be displaying the number plates uh, that I'm holding my, in my hand. Um, these were inside the vehicle, down beside the driver's seat, and don't actually relate to this vehicle whatsoever. Uh, the plates they're on it don't relate to this vehicle. Um, the identity of the, the, the vehicle is actually what I'm holding in my hand. Um, there's been an attempt by the driver to um, get away with driving without insurance and driving without uh, tax by hiding the identity of the vehicle. Unfortunately, um, he's used plates that also are not insured and are not taxed. Um, so we've, we've managed to deal with that at the roadside and we'll deal with the, the issue with the plates at a later date with him. Uh, and he'll be reported for fraudulent use of number plates. While the police assess the situation, the pickup truck arrives. You know it's on false plates? Yeah, yeah. We got 05, it's now 8 or something, isn't it? Yeah. Thank yeah, you. we got them. So, thank you very much. We're just trying to sort out the rest of the bits and then. No worries. Obviously, people do take vehicles out on the road, uh, knowing full well they're not insured, um, or they'll put license plates off other cars on their vehicle that that vehicle might be insured. Um, so, you know, if you're going to do that, that I don't advocate, pick one that's insured or taxed, um, but obviously that is illegal. So you can get caught. And the officer explains the slightly bizarre situation. So we, we were travelling down St James, St James Mill Road. Uh, there was a vehicle in front of us, which was the BMW that we just seized, and another vehicle in front of that. Um, the one in front was a white Citroen. It was driving with a flat tyre. It was quite clear to us that the BMW was following uh, the Citroen. So we've stopped them both when they've come in to, to get a new tyre. Um, and it, this, it's transpired that the driver of the Citroen is the person that owns the BMW that's not insured. Uh, and the driver of the BMW happens to be the, the, the lady that should have been driving the Citroen. Um, the Citroen driver isn't insured to drive the BMW, so she's been dealt with for no insurance. Uh, this chap's obviously been dealt with for no insurance, um, and will be dealt with at a later date for the, uh, the licence fraud offences. The tyre on the Citroen is, is in a very poor state. They've obviously driven on it quite some distance, um, trying to get to a tyre place. It's not the most ideal thing to do. Uh, the ideal thing to do is to stop to have the tyre changed at the roadside, or at least use um, some of the, the, the tyre reinflation kit that comes with cars. Uh, they've chosen to drive on it, it's now shredded the tyre completely, so it will have damaged the alloy wheel, uh, and the tyre itself is completely open, the cords are fully exposed on it as well. While the police inspect the Citroen, the uninsured BMW with the wrong number plate is removed by Lewis. So the BMW will be subject to normal um, 14 days no insurance recovery. He will have 14 days in which to insure it, to get the relevant documents, to ensure it's registered to himself uh, and to get the vehicle back. Should he not get the vehicle back, it will be uh, crushed within 14 days or at the end of 14 days. So what is he? Are the plates on this one are insured? Or? No, they're not. <laughs> that's, that's part of his problem. He might have got away with it if he put plates on that are actually insured. <laughs> You can think of me a crime and uh, not giving out any tips, but if you're going to put false plates on your car um, that's not taxed or MOT'd or insured, uh, make sure the ones you're taking them off or cloning have all the legal requirements, not no insurance, and then wonder why you got pulled for no insurance with your false plates. Right, just back at depot. At the request of the police, have asked us to remove these uh, false plates off this vehicle. So we're just going to go ahead, do that, and then basically throw them in the bin um, and then put it in for storage. The BMW was never collected. But one master criminal's loss is a bargain car hunter's gain as the motor ended up going to auction. Next time. A mini situation gets out of control. I'm just doing a few more checks, John, and then uh, we'll get the key and is start it, moving. Oh, it is actually a secret, is it? More cars are threatened with the crusher. Next, John. It's gone right at the mini roundabout, heading towards Sile. 
and police chase a wanted van. Catch all that new next Wednesday at 8. Even the weather forecasters didn't see it coming. 35 years on, we look back on the great storm of 87, brand new Sunday at 9. And tonight, facing public fury and their day in court, justice is served in Channel 5's brand new original drama magazine next. <laughs> 